Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Mix Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me show the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 Damien Azor Classic. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Two things before we jump right in. The first one is that there might be a few more cuts in this video than normal. Uh, my throat is bothering me and I do have a glass of water set aside so that way I can uh, I can continue on but uh, just bear with me, my, my sincerest apologies. And the other thing is that I appreciate all of your guys' feedback on last week's video talking about profanity and a lot of you brought up uh, some great points. So I think if uh, if the video might end up being really colorful, you know, in the future. Um, I know someone had suggested if I do a disclaimer at the beginning of that video, that way uh, if you guys are watching with your kids, you don't have to worry that they're going to uh, to hear that language. So I think I might end up doing that. But still, everything will remain the same. PG or G, those, you know, those few words might end up coming out, but if it's going to be more colorful than than uh, the normal, then I will definitely let you guys know ahead of time. All right, so let's get on with the show. All right, so the first question from The Bag Memo. <clears throat> I know you love Louis Vuitton. They have so many new releases lately. Most of them are really beautiful, but there are also pieces that I just don't get. Have you ever seen a new release from Louis Vuitton that made you say no? Oh no, in a bad way. Um, <laughs> this is a great, great question. All right, so you said it perfectly. Yes, I do love Louis Vuitton. They are my first love. I have major loyalty towards them, but I cannot deny that they have some funky, funky designs that they create. Now, we all talked about uh, Jeff Koons, uh, the, the collaboration that they did last year. A lot of people weren't a fan of it. Neither, I mean, I wasn't either, and uh, it wasn't my cup of tea or anything, but still, I was kind of like, okay, all right, you know, there's been some, there's been some other collections that I'm just like, oh man, that's, that's a little out there, but still, it's not too, too bad. However, there is one collection, I don't even know if it has been released yet, or anything like that, but it is Louis Vuitton's Cruise 19 collection. Uh, there's a few different pieces uh, for that collection. But there is a <laughs> there is there is a line that they made that I am just like what what okay now I haven't done any research on it so I don't know the thought process behind it I don't know if they're using it more like as a shock value I have no idea plus I am not the most fashionable person on the planet so what do I know right but anyways before I drag this on any uh, any further the collection consists of cats and we're not talking like you know, um, I don't know, they, they look like cartoon, like sticker cats on, on handbags. There's actually a handbag that is a cat as well. Now, Chanel did uh, cats a few, uh, a few years back, and even then, when they did their designs, a lot of them were very inconspicuous, and um, I didn't think that they were too out there. I mean, some of the clutches were a little... Um, were a little, uh, were a little funky, but still, they weren't as cartoonish as the ones that Louis Vuitton has for Cruise 19. I was just like, wait a minute, what? What? No way. Now, to each their own, you know, and I'm as much um, of an animal lover as the next person, but these cats, I mean, they don't even look happy. They look like they're like they're frazzled. They look, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> seriously, they look like they're just like, I don't, I have no idea. Like something happened to them. <laughs> but um, yeah, that collection, like I said, it's not for me. And um, it's, mm, mm -mm. <laughs> it's out there. But I would love to know if there's any, it doesn't have to be Louis Vuitton, but if there's any fashion house out there that you really love, that you're really loyal to, that has come up with a with a new release or with a design that you're just like, why? Why in the world would you do that? If you can, let us know in the comment section down below. So great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Mini M. What are your thoughts on the Chanel Classic Flap in the maxi size? I don't see it much. I'm considering it for the amount of stuff it fits inside, but something in me feels like it's somehow not as elegant as the other sizes. I'm also not very big, so I don't know if it'll be awkwardly big on me. Any thoughts on this size slash bag in general? Uh, great question. And so we have a little bit more eye candy. I will insert a picture of the Chanel Maxi. 
I think that the Maxi is a beautiful, beautiful bag. And if you are a fan of classic flaps, but you find that the medium large and the jumbo are just too small for your daily essentials, then I think going for the Maxi is a great way to go. I will also say that when it comes to this bag, I really like it in the single flap, which I know has since been discontinued. So uh, you'd have to go the pre love route to get it. I prefer it in the single flap more than the double flap. Even though I'm a big fan of double flaps, because I've said before, they end up keeping their structure and they don't necessarily cave in as much, uh, but they also take away from how much more you wanna carry with you. So if you're looking to really maximize your space, then I think that the single flap maxi is gorgeous. Not only that, it's also a lot more lightweight because uh, even with that, even if uh, the double flap seems like it's not, um, or that, that part of the, the bag doesn't seem like it's too heavy, it still ends up adding a lot more weight to it. Uh, but I think it is a great, great bag. And you said that somehow you don't feel it's as elegant as other sizes. I think it's all a matter of personal preference because I have seen people in formal settings where they are wearing the wallet on chain and the mini, but I've also seen them wear the maxi and it looks fantastic, you know, because at the end of the day, a Chanel classic flap looks fantastic in any setting and with whatever it is that you're wearing. At least that's how I feel. Call me crazy, but those are just my two cents. Uh, but I love the maxi. There's just something about it and it could be the fact that you can carry everything and the kitchen sink in that bag, especially when it comes to the single flap that I am a really big fan of. Um, I've also thought that it might be a little too big on my, uh, on my body frame. But the more and more that I see it, the more and more I'm like, oh, it's kind of growing on me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not on my radar or anything like that, but I still think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag. So I say, if you love it, go for it. If it fits exactly what you need, um, you know, it might end up working out perfectly for your lifestyle. But regardless, I would definitely recommend going into the boutique, trying it on a few times, taking all of your daily essentials with you and just seeing how everything ends up uh, fitting. But uh, hopefully that was able to help. Next question from Kristen D. What are your thoughts on the new Sac de Jour, the Souple? At first, I thought I didn't like the look of the studs on the new version, but after watching a video and seeing that it is a more relaxed slash softer leather, I am finding myself thinking about it more and more. Uh, absolutely, and I will insert a picture of that bag right now. I like to call this the Sac de Jour 2.0, and even though I've always been a fan of the original one, um, it was a little too it was a little too heavy for me, and uh, I also felt that the leather was a little stiff. But when this one came out, oh yeah, my eyes totally, totally lit up. Uh, I love the fact that it's available in four different sizes. I believe that the Nano size retails for $22.50 here in the states, if I'm not mistaken, and they go up as high as $34 or $36, but don't quote me on it. Um, I love the fact that. It, even though it does have a few bells and whistles with the studs, I still don't feel that it's too, too much either. I still think that it's somewhat understated. I think it would make for a great work bag just because of that. And um, it's also very versatile. And just the overall just the overall look, just by adding that softer leather to it, it gives it a completely different look, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Even though it's the same type of silhouette, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about it that that uh, that the soft leather kind of added to it. So I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think it is perfect. I know that Wendy's uh, loving life. She recently got one and she loves it. But yes, I am a fan of this bag. You get the beautiful leather, the craftsmanship, the versatility, and a friendly price point on top of it. So I say, if you love it, go for it. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Susan B. Did you learn French in secondary school? Uh, I did not. I actually took a different language when I was in high school, but I learned French from my mom. My mom used to be a French tutor when she was younger, and uh, when I was little, she would teach me phrases, colors, numbers. Uh, I learned so much from her. So we would kind of, it was really awesome too, because we would sit there and we'd talk back and forth. Uh, but I kind of got away from it the older that I got, and I didn't really have an opportunity to speak it as much, so I lost a lot of it. And then uh, once I got into high school, like I said, I took a completely different language. Um, I really wish that I would have taken French though, but uh, there was a, there was no way for me to do that. But unfortunately, I don't speak it as well as I would like. If anything, I feel that I end up understanding it a lot better. And uh, when we were in Paris or when we went to France, I was able to get by no problem. But I still kind of struggle, you know, with a few things. But uh, I can't speak it as well as I understand it. Um, but there's one thing that always stands out in my head when it comes to uh, my mom teaching me French when I was little. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but um, there's obviously there's a show called uh, I Love Lucy. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. I loved I Love Lucy. And uh, there is um, there is an episode where Lucy and Ethel are learning French. 
and the gentleman is trying to tell her to say the table and Lucy can't <laughs> can't get it right to save her life she's saying le table le table that's kind of how I felt when I was with my mom because she'd say no 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 Minnie you have to say it you have to say it like this you have to kind of give it that little accent to it uh, so she taught me to to give the words an accent but it always reminds me of <laughs> of that episode from I Love Lucy I think it is hilarious um, it just it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I did not take it. I really wish I would have. And I still, ha I actually have a program on my computer where I try to brush up as much as possible, but I still, I still butcher words left and right. <laughs> and this leads me to my next question that is very similar from Puka Ngaro. Hopefully I said that correctly. 15. Uh, two questions. Number one, I know you are fluent in a few different languages. And if I can remember correctly in French, does it bother you when you are watching a YouTube video and he or she pronounces the names in Spanish and not in French? For example, multi-cart should be multi-cart, not multi-cartes. Am I the only one that cringes when I hear them say the wrong pronunciation? LOL. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let real talk here. I have no room, zero, zero room to talk when it comes to the correct pronunciation of French words because I butcher them all the time. I say them wrong all the time. And if there's one thing that stands out more than anything is the fact that I am known for saying vaquetta, not vachetta. A lot of, I mean, everyone says vachetta when, it, when they're referring to the leather on, uh, on the Louis Vuitton pieces, vachetta of this, vachetta that, and I always say vaquetta. Uh, and I've always said, you know, tomato, tomato. People know what I'm talking about. You know that I'm talking about the leather, you know, but uh, I get so many messages. So many people get frustrated, and I think frustrated is an understatement because they're like, many, you're saying it wrong. You're saying it wrong. You say it this way. You say it that way. Why don't you say it correctly or whatever it is? And... Uh, <laughs> So like I said, I have I have zero room to talk when it comes to it. But let's be honest. I'm not saying Louis Vuitton correctly either. I'm saying it with an American accent because it's really pronounced Louis Vuitton and no one says it like that. There's only one person. There's only one YouTuber that I know that says it the exact same way every time they are talking about Louis Vuitton, and that is Charles Gross. Everyone else says Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, or whatever it is, and I don't judge them. I don't sit there and say, no, 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 you're saying it wrong, because I know, hey, I butcher them too. <laughs> so, you know, it, it doesn't make me cringe because I have no room to talk. I can't sit there and say, oh yeah, I say it correctly. I really wish that I could, you know, and uh, the French language is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. I love it so, so much, but I don't do it justice at all. Sometimes I might say it correctly and other times I'm all over the place, you know, so I try not to judge people that don't say it correctly because, um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I can't really say anything on this subject. Uh, number two, what are your thoughts on Chloe bags? I am specifically, I am specifically looking at the Chloe Mini Day bag. I have never ventured away from Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Goyard, but I do feel I am ready to get into another luxury brand. I know that Chloe is not very good for resale wise, but I am not buying to resell. It's my birthday next week, and my husband says he'll buy me the bag, but I don't know if I'm 100% ready. Thoughts? Okay, so we have even more eye candy. I will insert a picture of the Chloe mini day bag right now. This is such a cute bag and I love the fact that it's versatile and it also has an amazing price point. From what I have seen, a lot of people that do have this bag, they rave about the leather, so I think that's pretty awesome. And if you do have the Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and Goyard, those are great, but if you wanna add a little spice, if you wanna add a little variety to your handbag collection, I say go for it, why not? You know, who knows? That Chloe Day bag might end up being your forever bag, it might end up being your most used bag, you never know. But uh, yeah, I say go for it. I know that it, sometimes it can be a little, um, um, it can be a little nerve-wracking when you when you kind of stick to a certain brand or certain brands and you feel comfortable with them and then once you kind of start to venture into other ones you're like oh, I don't know I don't know um, and sometimes it doesn't end up working out and other times it ends up working out perfectly but I feel that if we never try it out we'll never know so I say go for it and happy early birthday I'm super super excited for you and hopefully this was able to help Next question from N5. I seem to have a lot of fake Louis Vuitton Chanel etc. bags popping up on my Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube feeds. 
When I see an unboxing video, it makes me mad. I wonder if I should flag it as copyright infringement. So here are my questions. Number one, do you think that the Lux community has an obligation to report copyright infringement? Um, I don't think it's an obligation. If anything, I feel that the fashion houses are very appreciative when people do come forward with, uh, with any type of information or if they end up flagging a website or whatever it is. Um, so an obligation, not necessarily. Number two, do you wonder if a person do you wonder if a person would lie about a bag, watch, sunglasses, etc., would lie to you about other things? This is an interesting question. Um, I think anything is possible. Personally, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, I know a lot of people might disagree with me on that, but you know, I always like to. I always try to see the positive in every possible aspect. So um, there's always a possibility that someone might end up doing that. But um, yeah, I will always give them the benefit of the doubt. And number three, how do you feel about people who say there's no shame in the game and continue to purchase fakes? This has come up a few times, and I know a lot of people disagree with me on this topic, and that's totally fine. Um, but I think that someone that is buying a replica and they know everything behind it, they know the dark side of it, they know the whole counterfeiting industry and what it entails, and they're just like, you know what, I'm gonna continue to buy the bag because that's what makes me happy. It's what I've said before, you do you and I do me and that's where I leave it. I leave it at that, you know, because it'll just make for a really heated conversation if one side is trying to tell the other, no, look at it my point of view, look at it this way, look at it that way. You know, we're all adults and I feel that if that, if you know what it entails if you know you know what's behind it and if you still want to buy the bag then so be it I am not I am absolutely nobody to tell someone what they should or shouldn't do with their funds I've always said that and even if it's not my cup of tea when it comes to replicas it's not what I choose to spend my money on um, I'm still not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone and try to um, try to make them see you know what's going on with replicas or anything like that that's just not the type of person that I am so um, you know to each their own if it makes them happy then so be it and I know that as long as I'm purchasing whatever makes me happy that's what matters at the end of the day so fantastic questions and hopefully I was able to answer them and the last question from Kyle Cheeseman what are your thoughts on the epi leather from Louis Vuitton you have an amazing collection but I can't help to notice I don't see much epi in your collection is there a reason uh, you are so so sweet and uh, at one point in time I actually had four or five pieces of epi uh, of epi leather um, I didn't have any handbags I always 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 loved the speedy 25 uh, in the black epi with the gold hardware I thought that bag was gorgeous but I've never had handbags. I always had small leather goods. I had uh, two agendas and I also had a couple different wallets. Um, and when it comes to Epi, I've always, always, always appreciated how incredibly durable the leather is because of the texture. You know, there's pieces from like the 80s or from, uh, from the 90s that look like they're from like 2017 or from this year because it ages so well. It's like, it's scratch proof. It's virtually indestructible type of thing. Um, but the only reason why I got rid of them is because I found that I wasn't rotating those items as much. And um, my heart doesn't really sing as much for Epi as it does for canvas or even on prompt leather, as crazy as that might sound. Uh, and even though I appreciate um, the durability of Epi, um, I don't know if it's necessarily the texture that sometimes kind of turns me off of it, which is what makes it durable. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's crazy for me to think that way, but I do. And I also feel that sometimes when it comes to the colors of epi leather, because of that same texture, sometimes it ends up kind of muting the colors or it ends up downplaying the color a little bit more than I would like. And it could be because I want something maybe a little bit more vibrant. Uh, but uh, yeah, epi leather is beautiful. It's very, very, very durable. And it's the type of, uh, it's the type of leather that if you're a fan of, and if you have multiple pieces in your collection, that those things will wear, I mean, extremely well for many, 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 many years to come you know and just the, the overall fact that it is so crazy durable is amazing but uh, like I said it just uh, it didn't make my heart sing as much as some of the other pieces that I had in my collection so I ended up selling them but I do love it and I do appreciate it nonetheless it is just no longer uh, it's no longer for me but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it uh, all right you guys so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help you had some awesome questions this week. I am so sorry that I had so many cuts. <laughs> I feel like my I feel like my my voice also sounds really hoarse, right? <laughs> I sound <laughs> maybe it's because I'm, I'm making it like lower, but I feel like I sound like I don't know, 
like like I'm super super sick hopefully that's not the case because it could be because of the heat it's like crazy hot in the day and then it's like 69 degrees at night and it's like a 40 degree difference you know just drops so a lot of people are getting sick I just hope I'm not one of them <laughs> but anyways uh, my apologies for all of the cuts thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure and give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and you would like to please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos which is anywhere from two to three times a week and I do get asked quite often where you can ask questions for Minx Monday and if you can please put them on the most recent MMQA it makes it so much easier for me to see them but I can't believe this is 196 we have four to go for 200 I am so so excited uh, all right but uh, I love you guys and for this week's lineup you will see me one more time I do have a, a review and you might actually see me on Thursday I'm gonna try my or my, not Thursday Saturday I will try my hardest um, to get a video for Saturday as well but again thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you later and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours. Have a great day.